Dr. Jane Higgins is a consultant psychiatrist who works in a psychiatric unit of a local community hospital. She specializes in the treatment of patients with psychiatric illnesses, particularly those with dementia. As a result of her research work in this area of medicine, she receives a telephone call from the medical director of a multinational pharmaceutical company. Dr. Higgins, this is Tim Lewis. I'm the medical director of a biotechnology company called Neurofarm Limited, he said cheerfully. We are an international biotechnology company with research headquarters in North Carolina in the U.S. I am wondering if you would be interested in undertaking a clinical trial for us as an investigator. Please, tell me a bit more about the study, replied Dr. Higgins. Dr. Lewis went on to describe the trial. Basically, we want to examine the blood of groups of participants, senior citizens with mild senile dementia, taking a small amount of blood from them and then analyzing it for genetic markers related to dementia and two treatment regimens. I'll send you a copy of the protocol that we have written and also the informed consent documentation. Thanks. I look forward to receiving it, replied Dr. Higgins. She subsequently receives the documents from the biotechnology company and is very interested in conducting the trial, so she duly submits an application to her EC. Dr. Higgins is a consultant psychiatrist specializing in the treatment of patients with psychiatric illnesses particularly dementia. She has been invited to participate in a trial that aims to examine the blood of senior citizens with mild senile dementia, looking for genetic markers related to the illness, as well as examine two established treatment regimes. The EC quickly identifies the potential vulnerability of the trial population, but it also finds the trial scientifically sound and of low risk. The protocol has addressed the informed consent process for tissue sampling and genetic markers, so these are not issues of concern. However, the informed consent document is to be signed by the trial participants only, not by a third-party representative. The EC would accept the protocol under the condition that at least one legally authorized representative signs the informed consent form together with the participant to ensure voluntary trial participation. Note, diagnosis of dementia does not automatically confer decisional incapacity on affected individuals. Especially in the earliest stages of dementia, many remain capable of making a wide variety of decisions, including deciding whether to participate in the research. The views here on the informed consent process in this dementia trial are diverse.